All right, welcome back to another video, guys. So if you remember last video, um, I kind of started, I guess I could call it a mini series, a little uh, project kind of making the Camaro more streetable. We worked on the muffler last time, and I said this video we're gonna be working on the shift light, but instead I'm gonna do something that honestly I can't wait for. I, I'm so excited to get it done. And that's gonna be putting the stock seat belts back in. So I got these off of eBay for cheap. They were like under $100, full set front and rear. I don't need the back, so I'm probably gonna end up selling them um, if I don't use them in the Trans Am or something. But they're this graphite, blackish gray color. They should match pretty well. And they mount in the exact same spot as the third gen belts. So right in the little groove, kind of recessed pocket on the roof there. Then they come down and I think this mounts where the retractor on the stock belts went down there or something. I gotta kind of look up some pictures to see exactly where they go. But I already have the bolts in there. I left the 13 millimeters up there. So in case I ever wanted to put them back and I really wasn't expecting it, but I have them in there. So I have the left belt here. There's actually an L on it. I don't know if you're gonna see that. There's an L and there's like an arrow pointing that has to go forward. This mount in this kind of pocket up here. And you know, looking at this, I didn't even realize it. But that headliner has to go. There is no way that headliner is going to fit over these belts and I'm going to be able to get it back in. I mean, look at the space between this and here. No way in hell. So that thing is basically useless. Uh, I'm probably going to end up getting like a Hawks headliner because they're that ABS plastic. Now for the bottom one here, we have to take this bracket off. There's our bolt. And now we're just gonna slip this beautifully right down in there like that. So I already zipped the nuts out from underneath. And I think what I'm gonna do, just so I can kind of clip these out, I'm going to get some end pieces like this so they're clipping though that way i'll come back and i'll screw the belts back in with this um and then i can just kind of unclip them when i'm not using them i wouldn't have to leave them folded over the reason being with this side it's a little bit tight with the harness here i can't get to the adjustment and i can't get it to sit flat so for now i just pulled it out but i'm definitely going to grab a hook for this piece and i'm just going to bolt that in with the hook that way, this will be bolted down, and when I need the belt, um, I can just hook it on the outside, or I'll just leave it hooked and kind of tuck it under the seat. All right, I'm not sure which of these is right and which is left. Uh, I guess this is the driver's side because it has the connector in it. Yeah, all right, this is driver's side. You know what, I'm gonna clean this off quick before I pop it in. All right, easy enough, we're in, and everything lines up beautifully. Got a retractor right there. That I could clean a little bit better, but that sits in the perfect spot. Got our belt sitting here. Eventually, I am gonna change these seats out. That's the third thing I wanna do to make this thing a little more comfortable, a little more streetable. So when I do that, I'll probably have some kind of hook um, where this is gonna sit somewhere back here. But for now, it just kinda sits in front there. When I go to the track, pop it back there without a problem. I'll pull the harnesses through and I'll have something comfortable for the street, and it'll also be up to par for the track. But that works as it should. Oh, and uh, one thing I noticed, the bolts that the belts came with, they're different. They actually have a shoulder on them. So I think I might actually be able to get that side one, the side harness in through this. Maybe if I ream the hole out a little bit, and have it sit over this shoulder so it's kind of like loose. I think that'll give it enough space where I won't have to uh, change the hooked end.
Oh my God, that is so nice. And I'm ready to go. That is it. You know, it's the little things that make the biggest difference on whether a car is uh, street friendly or not. The only kind of real downside I think to putting these belts in the car is you have um, this kind of space here that looks unfinished because you don't have that. The third gen, they had like a retractor down here as well. Um, so there's kind of this big bulky thing on here. I looked online and a few people have made kind of like plastic covers that go over this. But I'm gonna go shoot through the other side quick, clean up a little bit, and then what do you say we tackle the shift light? All right guys, so I finished the belts. I went and just completely pulled the uh, passenger harness out and we just have a regular belt over there. And for actually um, bolting this down, I just had to trim some of the plastic off the bottom because for some reason this side, the bottom of the belt didn't want to line up with the hole because there was too much of this like plastic casing hanging past the actual metal bracket. So I just cut it down right here up to the bracket and that fits in there fine. I used the correct uh, fourth gen bolts with the shoulder on them so they have a little bit of movement to them. And um, I just kind of tucked the carpet up. And that's how this is gonna sit for now, who knows? I mean, if I care enough, I pull the seats and eventually paint the tracks and everything, I might actually kind of put something over that. But this is working out very, very good. I just drove the car yesterday and um, just hopping in with a regular seatbelt, it's so much better than having to harness up every single time uh, just to grab coffee or go to work or something. Especially for the passenger, this is going to be a lot easier because usually I have to help the passenger kind of buckle everything together, get the harnesses on. So just having a regular belt in here is going to be so much easier for both of us. But I'm going to now go on to the shift light. I went on to Summit and I picked up the cheapest kind of like best rated light I could get. As I mentioned, this thing isn't doing shit. I don't know why it's not working. Vacuum gauge works fine. Boost gauge is just all over the place. Sometimes it'll just shoot up instantly. Sometimes it'll gradually go up, not hit the red line. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. So I already checked the tack connection. That's fine. And Google says that a lot of other people are having the same problem with that light. So this was uh, rated really well on Amazon. It was like $40. Very simple light dial on the back and the good thing is this is already wired up so i'm just going to pop this cover or this whole bezel off of the pillar here and just tap into the wires the tack and the power and everything and i'm probably i don't know i might mount it like this or more likely underneath the vents kind of like that over there all right so i got the light mounted up I didn't put it up here because the angle was just too off and it was pointing like straight up in the air. So I did mount it right underneath the vents. There was actually already a hole there. So I wonder if somebody had a shift light or something mounted under there at one point. But it comes with little uh, self-tapping screws. I just put one screw in there because it's the only way I could get to. Got it mounted up there, kind of bent it and pointed up. And that's hidden away pretty nicely. I have the wires uh, wrapped in electrical tape and I tucked it under the trim for this. So those are pretty much uh, completely hidden. And it fits in there pretty nice. And I'm just going to run the wires underneath the panel here under the cluster. And then I already went and cut the tack wire from the non-working gauge, as well as stripped the, the power and grounds here. So I'm just going to tap into those, connect these three to those three, and then we'll be ready to hook up the laptop. And hopefully it's going to work. Also, here are the other two lenses they give you. Um, they give you an amber and a red. I went and put the bluish purple one in there. All right, guys, so it's the next day. I got the wire I needed from the house and I just extended them over and kind of just tapped them into here for now. But I already started it up and I'm kind of testing it out. I'm trying to dial in where um, I want it to um, shift because it seems like the RPM on the back of this isn't corresponding to what the car is actually doing. I was just using live data um, on my phone because HP Tuner still isn't working for some reason. And with this set pretty far down, it doesn't come on till maybe around like 3,500 RPM. So I should be able to still dial it in, just what's on the back doesn't seem to be correlating, you know, perfectly to what the engine's actually doing. All right, guys, so my interior is in shambles here. I'm trying to figure out why I can't get anything to work uh, to connect to the car. I'm trying to use this Autel scanner that I was gonna try out. Autel sent me this, it's just like a Bluetooth dongle and you use an app on your phone to, um, 
use live data. I was going to monitor the RPM and then set the shift light, but I can't get this to connect. It lights up, but it won't connect to the phone Bluetooth wise. And then as I mentioned, my dongle for the HP tuners doesn't connect. So I'm going to have a feeling that it's a problem with the connector. And I'm looking at this now and these pins in here are very, very loose. I feel like it's not making a good connection and trying to kind of bend them down a little bit to make them tighter this one actually popped out and the plastic like clip retainer that holds the pin in there is completely broken so i ordered a replacement um connector that's going to be coming tomorrow i have it set really really low now but when i give it some revs It is working. I just need to dial the RPM in and see exactly um, where it's gonna come on. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because I can't um, just set the dial on the back. The dial on the back is very, very far off. I have it all the way down below 4,000 and it's not coming on um, until above 4,000. So setting this to 6,500 is not gonna actually be accurate i think that's why this one wasn't working because um you go in with the laptop and you program this and i had it set to like 6250 or something like that and it wasn't coming on so i have a feeling if i connect the laptop to this and dial it back to let's say um maybe three or four thousand to actually light up i think it'll probably work then um it might be like a resistance issue or something weird going on but for now this is working i just have to get my obd problem figured out so i know what rpm i'm at and then i can get it all dialed in also, next thing we're going to be doing to this car is putting a two-step in. I already ordered one, so um, I think that's the last thing I want to do. Obviously, I have to get the OBD port working because if I can't data log, it's kind of useless going to the track with it. But um, once the two-step comes in, we'll get that all wired up. We'll test it out. Hopefully, by then, I have the shift light all hooked up and like working correctly, and the OBD problem will be fixed.